One little robot, a very small but intelligent brain, sits up back of the engine in the voltage regulator and keeps close tabs on the generator to see that the generator makes enough current to keep the battery fully charged, but not too full. Okay, welcome back. In the last installment of working on this 48 Chevy, you saw me pull this wiring harness loose as I was trying to detail the inner fenders and put the engine in and button the torque tube back up. And now I'm going to pull the wiring harness out and so I will get to all these wires here eventually but I'm going to start with the hard part and and go inside and remove all the wires from underneath the dash. Okay. I'm not going to be able to do this on camera. I can hardly move my arms and hold this thing at the same time, but um there is a there's a nut on a stud here at the tip of my finger. And I don't know if you can see it. That wire's in the way. Okay, right there. There's a 3 8 nut on that stud. And if I remove the speedometer, this is the back of the speedometer. You see those two two rusty nuts. Excuse me? On those studs holding the speedometer in. There's two more on the other side of the speedometer. Once I get those off, I can move the speedometer. And then there's two more nuts underneath those tabs. And then I should be able to move, uh, pull this entire instrument cluster forward. All right. And here's the other side, the speedometer and the instrument panel. So if I get those loose, pulled forward, it'll be a whole lot easier to um, take off the wires, label them, keep everything straight. So I'll get going on that and meet you when I'm done. Okay, I got everything loose. I'm going to take the speedometer cable off the back of the speedometer. Should have done that already. And it was rigid. That's okay. Alright. The speedometer is nice and loose. And that should allow this instrument panel to come forward. Okay, it's necessary to get the lighting switch out to have enough slack in the wiring to be able to do the job. Plus you got to remove wiring from the back of the switch anyway. So you might as well get it out. Now there's, when you reach up under there and feel the back of the switch, there's a spring-loaded button. And I'll show you this up close when I get it out. But what you want to do is pull the lights on and then push the button in and then you can pull the shaft all the way out. Now I need to unscrew the bezel there. So I'm just going to take my large screwdriver and back the bezel out. One of the gas gauge wires is really tight, so I'm going to have to release it but I, before I can go any farther.
How often do you use an 11 30 seconds wrench? Well, that's what this is. I sure don't use it much. nut back on so I don't lose it. Label the wire before I forget what it is. Yeah, so here's something you run into often on when you're working on old cars, of course. Um, this hole here is provided for the wiring harness to go to the uh, headlight dimmer switch, which gets mounted up in there through the floor. But we got this extra wire going through the same hole. Um, and that is connected to this fuse holder these two wires it's getting hot it's getting juice off the voltage regulator terminal going into the cab through this hole and let me turn on a light okay coming to that little switch under the dash then it goes back out through the fuse holder like I said through that hole and I traced it clear and back there's the lovely carpet that was in it that's nice okay and it's coming back to here under the rear pan the bumper filler plate here and you can see they used a mixture of older cloth wire and newer just plastic coated wire and uh, that is going up to I guess what they were using for backup lights so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna cut I'm gonna leave a little pigtail sorry about the light I'm gonna leave a little pigtail and cut maybe four inches so there's still wire sticking out of the light and then I will contact the owner 
and see if he wants to keep his cool old backup lights or what he wants to do. instrument panel harness. By far the most complicated harness in the car. So I'll go through and uh, make some notes on what kind of wire I need to order, terminals, that sort of thing, and get some parts coming. Well the owner does not want to keep the lights on the back, the uh, backup lights that were added later. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is get that, get all the extra wire I can off of this thing out of the way. Before I start, if you have a similar project in mind, I highly recommend you get, I always recommend you get good resources. This is a copy of the original wiring diagram book that the dealership would have had. And this one's actually very, only a few pages, but it has the wiring diagram of the truck and passenger car. And you can go online and get similar uh, diagrams. I just prefer this because it's much easier to read. The, when you print stuff out, you know how it is. The writing gets fuzzy. If you do want to look up wiring diagrams online, I recommend you go to the old car manual project. I think that's what it is. I'll put up the correct web address on the screen. They have just tons of vintage automotive literature scanned and you can look up what you got, print it off. Very good resource. Okay, so I got two spots that were taped on later right here and right here. So I'm just gonna cut those open. Okay, so what they did, still back in the 40s, obviously they had cloth covered wire and they were color coded. So this is what they called natural. It was the natural, I'm not even sure what material uh, that's covered with, but they had what they called tracers. Um, your son. So if you can see, there's a red tracer. It's very faint now. It's a very light pink. There's a black cross tracer. It looks like V's, a V shape in there. There's green, and then this is natural. There's no tracer in it. And instead of 
the modern style of color coding the whole insulation they wove that thread in there and so I've been tracing everything um, checking the gauges of the wire so I know what I need and uh, writing down the sizes and the styles of the terminals um, on these you do have a lot of your basic straight terminals you also have flag terminals where they come to the side if I can get that on camera so there's the two different styles a straight or a flag so I need those eyes um, I have a few butt connectors light sockets bulbs this is just tape Looks like three quarters of an inch wide tape or so. Um, so that's no big deal. I'll have to get grommets, heat shrink. I've got my list. I will go to supplier, order all that, and we'll get back with you when it comes in. I'm going to make and that is this wire here I'm going to include in this harness that was added later and that's for the the Lumidor amber fog lights on the front end of the car so I will include that um, in the video where the previous video the second part of where I was finished installing the um, the torque tube ball I painted the fenders you saw me clip a wire right here to get this wiring harness out of the way. These two ends go to the fog lights on the front. And this goes to the switch under the dash. So I'm going to include that. 
Now those backup lights, Chevrolet did offer an accessory backup light kit, but these are not it. These are, I would say, maybe even five or ten years newer, something, you know, not a Chevrolet part. And they just kind of look uh, a little more unrefined. So we're going to we're going to remove those, but we'll keep the front fog lights. So all I'm going to do is just start tracing wires. I think I'll start with the the largest wire with the red tracer in it. Should be this one. That goes to the horn relay. Okay, what this particular wire needs is a branch right there. This is going to the horns. So I have a terminal here and at the other end of that will be the other horn. So I need to make a gap here. We can play around and do that. And yes, I could cut this long wire open, or just cut it, and Y off of it like that. But that makes for a pretty ugly joint there. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so now I'm going to solder this like that.
Now if you're doing a, a project like this where you're rewiring something that's at least at least from the 40s or the 50s do yourself a favor and please remove the plastic from your terminals. Keeping that on there makes a project go from awesome to really lame in the blink of an eye. This particular line is for um, the headlights and at the instrument panel end I've got a uh, light socket for the indicator so I'm going to slide this on a bulb socket and I have a spring and a little plastic I don't know what you even want to call it, keeper. Try to get some flux inside this contact point. This is what the the uh, contact on the bottom of the bulb touches. Okay.
So that'll go like that. And then like that. And then when we put our bulb in, works good. I'm working on the fog lights, which like I mentioned before, they are an aftermarket accessory, and I'm I'm adding a, a wire in the loom to kind of hide it, but I am making it out of this, uh, it's kind of a charcoal and yellow, with a yellow tracer wire that I already had in my stash of supplies so there'll be no doubt that it's something something special and I'm putting uh, female bullet connectors at each point where where the wire for the light comes in through the fender so that'll be very simple to uh, connect them or disconnect them All right, just a brief update before I call it a night for tonight. This is how far I've gotten so far. I think it's looking a little better. The old and the new. I am right at this point with what I've wrapped. So right now I'm working on the stoplight switch here and I've got a uh, the battery wire going to the voltage regulator here and on towards the instrument panel and the light switch end of the harness. Just going slow, taking accurate measurements, trying to do a good job. That's all it takes to do this. Just take your time, take good notes, labels, pictures, anything you need to do. Even if you don't think you need to do it, do it anyway.
So someone out there may be wondering why I chose to start at the other end where there were only four wires instead of starting here where it's the most complicated get that done with first and then go to that end where it gets easier. Well I do that because I always start with the longest wires possible and work my way towards the most wires if that makes sense. Now that may not always be the case on every wiring harness you do but if you start at the longest wire and build back to the most wires as you go you can add you can uh, secure them. So as I went you saw me start with these wires and they end up all the way out here some of them. So I can secure those tape them up I don't have to worry about them anymore because I'm done with that end. If I would have started here I would have had to have every single wire cut and done and loose before I could start attaching them. You know, if I did one of these short little wires, some of these wires come from the very end, at the other end, and so I couldn't tape anything together until I had every single wire set if I did it that way. If I start there, I can get those four wires done, tape them. Move on to the next branch, tape them. Move on to the next branch, tape them. And that way, it's a much, much easier to handle. This is what I call a female bullet connector. There's the male counterpart. The stoplight switch on this car has two of them. A little flux.
This is the last little assembly. This is by far the most involved assembly. And after this, I should be able to uh, add it to the harness, finish tape wrapping, and that'll be it. All of these get light bulbs, and then one spade connector to power it. Well, I think we're getting down to brass tacks here. The video is probably getting pretty lengthy at this point. So I think we'll call it quits with the finished product. I do need to order grommets for the firewall before I can reinstall the wire anyway. And I also want to rebuild a couple other harnesses, the two headlight harnesses, and fix a couple things that I saw going on inside the dash. If you'd like to see all that, leave a comment below. I'd gladly record it. Otherwise, I sure thank you for joining me on this video. I hope we all learn something together here, and I will see you on the next one.